For this lecture, we'll start this new topic, chapter nine. This is in situ stresses. And specifically, actually, we're going to cover this concept of effective stress. If you look at our course objective, uh, this is a list of main course objectives. And this chapter is one of the main um, uh, course objectives, uh, basically to determine the total and effective stresses in a soil mass. So that's the focus of this chapter here. And so first, just uh, a little bit of background why this is an important course objective. So effective stress concept is actually one of the most important and fundamental concepts in geotechnical engineering. And the reason being, so you need to know the effective stress in soil for many, many engineering applications. So I listed a few here. So when you, when you want to estimate the settlements, you need to know the effective stress before and after loading is put on. And this is something we'll cover in chapter 11, uh, consolidation. And when you want to determine the shear strength of soil, you need to know the effective stress. And when you want to analyze stabilities of different uh, slopes and earth retaining structures, you need effective stress. And also bearing capacity of foundations, you need effective stress. So basically, Effective stress controls engineering behavior of soil. So effective stress controls how compressible the soil may be, how strong the soil may be. So it's really very, very fundamental and very important concept. So that's uh, what we're, we're going to go over in this chapter. So basically, what is effective stress and how do you calculate the stress, uh, effective stress in the soil mass? So that's what we're going to cover um, in today and uh, in next week's lecture. So first, um, so what is effective stress? So first thing I want to go over is this concept. So effective stress, simply put, it's a measure of green-to-green -green contact force. So it's a measure of green-to-green -green contact force per unit area. So it's a stress, so it's a force per unit area or cross-sectional of the soil mass. So basically force per unit area. So that's the stress concept. And effective stress is a measure of green to green contact force per unit area, per cross-sectional area. And this, uh, so I've shown here, this is of course the idealization of real soil grains. I'm using just uh, spheres or circles here to represent uh, soil greens. And we have two rows of soil greens here so let me call this cross-sectional area A here. So let's, let me add a unit here. It's per unit area. So let me call this um, cross-sectional area A. Okay. And we have two rows of greens in contact with each other. And since effective stress is a measure of green to green contact force, so I'm going to call this uh, contact force. I'm going to label it as small n prime. This is n1 for the first green, first contact, and two prime for the second. And then we have n3 and n2 ni. So you have many, many greens. So this is in the ith contact. Okay. So that's just the green to green contact force. And then uh, based on this definition, so this sigma, we call effective stress sigma prime is green to green contact force. So we have N1 prime plus N2 prime plus Ni prime, okay. So that's the green to green contact force for these two rows of soil greens. So sum of all these uh, small N prime values divided by this cross-sectional area. So we have force per unit area. So that's effective stress definition. 
And I'm going to call this sum of these contact forces capital N prime. So this is capital N prime divided by A, where N prime is sum of small N prime. And I from one to number of contact. Right, so that's pretty simple. Just the force per area, and we're talking about green to green contact force per unit area. So that's the definition of effective stress force, green to green contact force per area. So this is pretty simple. But this is not the whole story. Okay. So if it's uh, soil is completely bone dry, that's it. So it's green to green contact force per area. Uh, this is a pretty simple definition. But in reality, we know natural soils are moist soil or saturated if it's below water table. So water actually complicates this whole effective stress concept. So as I mentioned, water complicates things due to this existence of buoyant force. And to, uh, to look at how water affects this effective stress calculation, I'm going to look at uh, this force balance of a soil column here. So shown on this slide, we have a soil column, and this is ground surface. Okay. And water table is somewhere below the ground surface. And we're going to focus on this soil column here. So this is a soil column. So let's look at the balance, the force balance, the equilibrium of this soil column and see how this buoyant force changes the, the stress calculation. And again, I'm going to call this cross-sectional area capital A. And we're going to look at just the cross-section of this soil column. So in particular, this uh, cross-section at the bottom of this column, B, B prime. Okay. For this cross-section, we're going to look at uh, force balance. So there are uh, a number of different forces. So we have the weight of the soil column. So I call this uh, capital W. So this is the weight of the soil basically above that BB prime section. And this weight is balanced by uh, that force I call N. So this is the total normal force acting on this BB prime plane. So that's the force balancing the weight of the soil column. So for vertical equilibrium, this is simple equilibrium. For vertical equilibrium, the weight of the soil W is balanced on this by this normal force N. The weight of soil we call W is balanced by N. So simply we have um, so this is vertical equilibrium. So I'm playing BB prime. So simply this is just W equals to N. Okay, so that's pretty simple. Just a force balance in the vertical direction. Total weight of the soil balanced by this normal force N here. And for this normal force N, Because we have water, so the water table is right here. So, so we have the soil particles emerged in water. So it's saturated soil below this water table. And this N therefore has two components. So there are two components to this balancing force N, that upward normal force. This first component, this is the green to green contact force. In this green to green contact force as previously defined, we call this N prime. So that's the sum of all uh, individual 
green to green contact force along that BB prime plane. So this is a BB prime plane. In cross-sectional area, we'll call this A. So basically, I'm zooming in on that plane BB prime. So the first component of that resistance force is green to green contact force, we call N prime. And this N prime is sum of these little N prime. So we have this individual contact force, we call N prime. So let's just use an I here. Okay. So that's the first component. And this N prime, this green to green contact, it acts over these very tiny contact area. And these are green to green contact area. I'm using small a here. Okay. So this small a, look at this expression. It's this the sum of individual green to green contact areas. So we have for each of these small area, that's n i prime. Okay. That's a very tiny area. And the actual area of this n prime that n prime axon is this uh, small a. So that's green to green contact area I call small a. So that's the first component of n. And then the second component of n comes from the buoyant force, comes from the pore water. So this is called uh, buoyant force. And this buoyant force I call capital U here. So that's basically coming, that's from the pore water pressure. So between these greens, inside these voids, we have basically water. And this water has pore water pressure. We call that small u. So these are basically pore water pressure. And this forward pressure acts over the area of greens that is not in contact. So it's basically, uh, if I call this capital U. So this capital U is simply the pore water pressure, small u, times the area. And that area is A minus capital A minus small a. So capital A, that's the total cross-sectional area and small a is green to green contact area. Okay. So that difference is the area over which this water, pore water acts. So that's capital U. And N prime again is sum of all these small n values. All right. So that's the two components of the uh, resistance force N. Okay. Now let's put everything together. And looking at that cross-sectional area A, and then we have, remember we have that force balance. And this N we said has two components. One is the cross, the green to green contact force we call N prime. The other one is that buoyant force capital U. Right. And now if you divide both sides by this A, this cross sectional area A, we have force per area. So that's a stress measure. So if you divide both sides by capital A. And on the left hand side, this is total weight over total cross sectional area A, or total resistance force N over area A. So that's a total stress measure. So that's what we call sigma. So this is sigma. 
on the right hand side, we have these two components. One is n prime over a. And by definition, that's green to green contact force per unit area. And that's effective stress definition. And then the second term, that U over A, that capital U over A. And capital U, we said it's small u, the pore water pressure times A minus, capital A minus small a. So that I'm just substituting the buoyant force into this expression. And then this means sigma is sigma prime plus small u one minus a over a. So looking at this last term here, pore pressure times one minus small a over capital A. And small a is this green to green contact area. So those are very tiny uh, contact points. So these are very, very small values. So this a small a over capital A this is approximately zero because that small a is very, very small compared to cross-sectional area. Very small. So for practical purposes, we are basically ignoring this ratio here. So this leads us, so this leads us to the final expression we have sigma the total stress sigma equals to the effective stress sigma prime plus pore water pressure u and more often this is written as sigma prime equals to sigma minus small u and this last expression here, okay. uh, this is called the effective stress equation. And this is perhaps one of the most fundamental and important equations in geote geotechnical engineering. So the effective stress sigma prime is calculated as the difference between the total stress and the pore pressure. And again, in this equation, so this is effective stress. And sigma is the total stress. And last term U here, this is the pore pressure. So that is the effective stress equation. So the effective stress is basically total stress minus pore water pressure. Okay. And this effective stress concept is first developed by Kao Tasaki. Uh, so I've mentioned uh, Tasaki's name a number of times in this course. So he's regarded as the father of modern soil mechanics. So many of the fundamental concepts we discuss in this course are first proposed and developed by uh, Kao Tasaki. So this is the effective stress equation. And so basically in this chapter, so all these uh, subsequent examples calculations are basically centered around this effective stress equation. So we're basically using this simple equation here to calculate total stress, effective stress in the soil mass and along different depth, along depth. Okay. And to calculate, to use this equation, so next thing I want to talk about is basically, so that effective stress gives you a formula to estimate stress in a soil mass, but how do we calculate these values? So how do you get the total stress? How do you get the effective stress? Again, I'm going to use this soil mass here. So this time we have ground surface and I'm going to put water table. So I'm going to put this uh, I'm going to put water table at the ground surface this time, just uh, to make the calculation a little bit simpler. And then we're going to look at this soil mass. 
the unit weight of this soil is gamma SAT. And we're going to look at stress at a particular location. And you can do this for different depths. But uh, we're going to look at steps H. We see the stress at this location, depth H. And I'm going to call this cross sectional area again capital A. So that's cross sectional area. So we're going to look at this, um, let's call this point B here. So A is cross sectional area. So at point B. So point B is at the depth H below ground surface. And we put water table at the ground surface, uh, again, just to make calculation easy. Uh, so the total stress Total stress by definition, total weight over total uh, over cross sectional area. So it's total weight So that's the definition of total stress. And for this soil column of cross sectional area A, the total weight is unit weight gamma SAT times the volume of this column, which is cross-sectional area A times H, divided by A. So that is the total stress. Again, total weight over cross-sectional area A. And this A cancels out. So this gives us gamma SAT times H. So we have an expression for total stress, the sigma. Okay. It's gamma saturated times the height. So basically the unit weight of soil times the corresponding height. So that's the total stress. And water pressure. And water pressure for point B here, this is simply a small u. It's the unit weight of water, gamma W, times height. So that is the water pressure at point B, okay, at depth H below ground surface or below ground uh, water table. And finally, the effective stress So this effective stress based on that equation sigma prime is the difference between these two. And this is gamma saturated times H minus gamma water times H. So that is the um, effective stress value at point B at the depth H below, uh, below ground surface. Okay. 